shock. The first thought was shock. Her friend was reported missing last week, and the Spokane County Sheriff's Office says her husband bought a one-way ticket out of the country. Winds are in the low teens out in Grant County near the fires. We are tracking cooler weather this week and maybe some productive rain. I'll tell you more about that next. This fire in Grant County is burning more than 5,000 acres. It's forcing people to evacuate and leaving others without power. Tonight, we are live from Grant County with the latest. Well, it is our first major wildfire of the season. It's already burned through 5,000 acres in Grant County near Royal City. So far, we're told the Highway 243 fire has destroyed several outbuildings. No homes, though. The images are just as intense from the ground. State resources are helping in the firefighting efforts. The Department of Natural Resources sent two planes to Grant County. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hi everyone, I'm Jane McCarthy. We don't yet know how the fire started. We know it started last night. Tonight we're focusing on how people who are impacted can get help, how the landscape and the winds are playing a role in this fire, and also how it's impacting our air quality. So first we want to get to the latest information on evacuation notices. About 25 homes near Smyrna were evacuated overnight. The areas highlighted in red on the map right there near the Wanapum Dam are under level two evacuations. There are about 75 homes in that area. That means residents need to be ready to leave their property at a moment's notice. And we want to give you a closer look at what firefighters are dealing with on the ground as well. Creme 2's Shana Walltower is live in Grant County tonight. And Shana, any updates on their progress tonight? Yeah, thanks, Mark and Jane. Progress has been slow, but it's still been there. I'm hearing a few planes that are soaring above me now. They're dropping water and retardant around the area. If you want to take a look over my left shoulder here, you can see some of the smoke that's been in the area. Just a minute ago, you couldn't see a lot of the smoke, but the wind has just brought a lot of this in, and this is what crews are having to battle. It's this and the layout of the land that's caused a lot of challenges for the past couple of hours for these crews. It's a fight involving more than 100 crew members. Just keep fighting with however you can. They're working with hand crews, but the structure of the land is what's making the challenge even harder. It's not an easy place to get access into. It's not like just a field here in town where you can drive a couple fire trucks across it or you know have a helicopter drop water in the middle of a football field. So it's steep terrain, rocky terrain. The fire tends to work up through crevices and little nicks and cracks. And so it's hard to get in there and make sure that fire's out. So you get a little wind pop up. Next thing you know, you got another head of the fire still working. Shearer says the area surrounding the fire has created some issues for their plan of attack. We have a lot of uh, uh, cultural sensitivity areas down in here, including some habitats, um, including habitat of monarch butterfly, which I just recently realized we're dealing with here. Which means there's a lot more that's going into getting these flames down. You know, kind of have to worry about those things as well, too. You don't want to just get in there and trample and tear up a bunch of ground if you don't have to. So again, a lot of difficulties that these crews are facing. They say right now their biggest goal is just trying to get as much of this contained as they can to make sure that no more homes are being threatened. They say they're hoping to have their night shift crew just as fully staffed as the one they had during the day and last night. We'll continue bringing you all updates on this fire as the night continues. But for now, reporting in Grant County, I'm Shana Waltower. I'll send things back in studio. Shana, thank you very much. Meantime, the Red Cross opened an evacuation shelter in Royal City. Anyone displaced by the fire can go to the Royal City Intermediate School. Workers are asking people to bring just the essentials, including prescription medicine, identification cards, and valuable documents. Well, the fire is burning so brightly it stands out on satellite imagery. This is from the National Weather Service. Now, typically, there is not enough light pollution to see Grant County. We're also getting a better look at the smoke, and here you can see winds are pushing it towards Spokane and eastern Washington. Also, it's making a minor impact on our air quality. Spokane dropped down to the moderate range earlier this afternoon, and it's staying there. Moses Lake also seeing moderate air quality tonight. According to the Washington Department of Ecology, Ritzville air quality dipped down into the unhealthy range for parts of the day. 
and the winds are making things tougher for firefighters out there. Tom is in the weather center right now tracking some breezy conditions, right Tom? Yeah, as Mark was mentioning, the winds coming out of the west blowing the smoke towards the east. Uh, we've seen wind gusts up to around 22 miles per hour and very, very warm conditions for this time of year. Temperatures in the low 80s near that uh, 243 fire. Again, uh, that smoke uh, causing some problems uh, in Ritzville as far as air quality is concerned. Also near Royal City and we're seeing some of that haze here in the Spokane area as well. You see Moses Lake has a current temperature of 84. Othello's at 81 degrees. We're in the mid 70s here in Spokane. Overnight we'll drop it down to 49. Look for increasing clouds tomorrow and some possible showers uh, developing as we get late into the afternoon and the evening hours, even out towards the fire, but especially here in eastern Washington we could even see some showers just to the west of Spokane. Much colder or cooler air moves in Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday's high only 63 with some a much needed beneficial rainfall across most of the uh, Washington state. So hopefully right on top of those fires. We'll take a look at your seven day outlook in greater detail coming up in a few minutes. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. So the Highway 243 fire is the first major wildfire of the year in Washington, and a lot of people are asking, is it too early to see such a big fire? Now, to be clear, there's been more than 300 wildfires in the state so far this year. But our Thomas Patrick is checking the data to see when we typically see the first large fire of the season. That story coming up on Creme 2 News at 6 tonight. And we will continue following the latest developments out of Grant County. Right now, you can find even more information on the fire on Creme.com, and that includes the detailed explanations of the evacuation areas. Shock. The first thought was shock. Well, she is talking about the sudden disappearance of her friend. 24 year old Arezu Kashifi was reported missing last week, and the Spokane County Sheriff's Office says her husband bought a one way ticket out of the U.S. Crime Chief Amanda Rowley spoke with the friend of that missing woman. Last week, a friend of 24 year old Arezu Kashifi reported her missing. Before she went missing, investigators say her husband Wahid bought a one way ticket out of the country and never picked up their children. Yesterday, law enforcement found a car belonging to Kashifi and her husband at the Spokane Airport. We talked to a man last night who identified himself as the husband's business partner. He says he received an email from the husband two days after buying the plane ticket. It said he was giving his partner all of his remaining shares of their business. It was out of the blue actually. It was, uh, I'm in, in my email right now. And uh, it shows that I got the email message at 1.56 a.m. When I woke up in the morning, I tried to call him, his phone was off. What were your thoughts when you saw the, the notice go out that, that she had been reported missing? Shock. The first thought was shock. Kate Kotenko works with the missing woman and has known her for about two years. She's here and that's her husband and that's their first son. She says Kashifi loved her children and that it was out of character for her to leave them. She was always caring. She was always making sure they look good. They're dressed up okay. They are, you know, all that stuff that good mom supposed to. She says Kashifi would confide in her about troubles in her marriage, adding the couple seemed to fight a lot. Well, he was very, very, very controlling. I, I don't know. I just wish she was okay. We talked to another friend of Kashifi's from work who asked to remain anonymous. She wrote in a statement, Arizu was one of the kindest, most gentle people I've met. She was and is a great mother and really loved being a mom. Both of these friends hope Kashifi is found soon and can come home to her children. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. In other news, prosecutors say that Florida deputy who failed to confront a gunman during the Parkland school shooting is now facing charges. Scott Peterson faces 11 charges, including child neglect and negligence. 17 people were killed in that shooting. He turned himself in this afternoon. Peterson was a Broward County deputy at the time on duty at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He never went inside during the shooting. His charges carry a combined sentence of 100 years in prison. I will be asking for votes and laws, not thoughts and prayers. Mass Following last week's mass shooting in Virginia, Governor Ralph Northam is calling for tougher gun laws. 12 employees were killed at the city building. He is calling a special session of the state legislature to reintroduce the same gun control bill that failed last session. 
He wants to give local governments the ability to limit firearms in public buildings, mandate universal background checks, and ban assault weapons. The guns in that shooting were purchased legally.